Hi everyone, Dennis Foley from Acoustic Fields. Today we're going to talk about the harmonic piston. Kind of an interesting concept here I thought of the other day watching an RTA in our studio. Take an engine cylinder with a piston, you know, the, the head stroke going up, coming down, going up, coming down inside a piston moves up and down inside a cylinder, okay? We have the, the top of the stroke. Let's compare the two to the fundamental frequencies that we work with, and particularly the low end. We want to look at that first. So that's the fundamental. The bottom of the stroke is the, the very last part of the decay rate of the harmonic, okay? So it's a tack and decay process with a similar movement inside of our rooms. That's what we have to be aware of. So look at this video clip here. Watch the fundamentals. Watch the 30, 40, 60. Watch them move here. You see how they go up, and they come down, and the distance between the top and the bottom, that's the decay. Okay, that's what we want to hear with the low frequencies. That's what we want to feel, right, through bone conductance. So we want to make sure we get that movement synchronized 30, 40, 50, 60, every you know, octave band below 100. So we want to make sure the attack and decay of that harmonic signature is similar. So we want to be managed with treatment. We've got to have the right amount of treatment, the correct type, amount, and position, right? That's our acronym that we use, TAP, type, amount, and position. So the harmonic tail, that decay rate is where the music life of the music exists. That's what we go for. That's what we try to achieve constantly. It's difficult, especially with low frequencies, and very difficult with the treatment technologies that's in the marketplace right now, except for our carbon technology, which is the most powerful that's available. So we can give you that kind of decay. We can give you that kind of consistency with our carbon technology. But it takes careful analysis. It takes looking at the right room dimensions. It takes a lot of steps, a lot of variables. But it's that movement that we're after that piston type movement with the attack and decay rate that we're looking at. All fundamentals must have the same rate of decay. That's critical. And that's very hard to do in the low end of most rooms, mainly because there's too much energy in the room. The room is not the right size for the usage. Constantly see that. People put too much energy in too small of a room. And that's just a recipe for disaster. It's a recipe for disaster for low frequencies, middle frequencies, and high frequencies. Room size, volume, and treatment. Those ratios must be carefully balanced, okay? You want to make sure that the fundamentals and the harmonics are working together. Anybody can produce a fundamental, okay? Anybody can make a sound. But what differentiates that sound quality from just sound or noise, if you will, is the harmonic, the decay rate of that fundamental. That's what we live for. That's what we like in our music. It's the bend, the tone of a bend in a guitar. That's what we live for. That's what we enjoy our music for. And most of the rooms I see, that could never, you know, occur. And you're missing out. You're missing out on what you hear in a live performance. Because you usually hear those kind of decays in a live performance. And that's what we're probably going for, although not really possible in a small room. It's very difficult to, to duplicate a live scenario in a very... Who, who, occurs in a very large volume room in a very small room. But we can get close, and that's what we're up to. You know, we can't go to live events all the time. So we want to make sure that our rooms are set up to do that. We'll do a video on, on a 30 cycle example in our studio because Pig Floyd has some really good um, recordings that go down in the 30, 30 cycle region. In our studio, you can actually feel that 30 cycle wave oscillating. So when the organ player hits the pedal or whatever instrument is making that low 
frequency 30 cycle energy, you can actually feel it oscillating through the room. At high pressure levels, it'll move your pant legs. I've had that happen too. Now, obviously, you don't want to use sustained pressure levels like that for, for long periods of time, but we can hear it through our studio. We can hear it oscillating 40, no problem, 50, no problem. Now, it's difficult in a lot of rooms because of the size of the room, but the goal is to try to duplicate this process, this harmonic piston, if you will, process, because that's where the musical life exists, and that's what we're always trying to achieve. What destroys that with middle and high frequencies? Reverberation. What destroys it with low frequencies? Modes. So pressure and reflection. We're back to the two basic issues that we've always talked about that we need to address. So harmonics are the most important thing that we have to design for in rooms. And that's the most important thing in order to have you emotionally connect to your music. Harmonic Piston. I hope this example helps. Thank you. Thank you for watching this video, and if you liked it, please give us a thumbs up. We also have a newsletter that you can subscribe to, so please do that because we offer special price discounts to only those on our newsletter. And then don't forget about our forum. We have started a forum on our own website where people ask questions, and I usually get a chance every couple days to look at it. There's an interchange between people on the forum, and we'll give you real answers uh, on a regular basis, so that'll help you. Thank you.